Hi, I'm Rebecca Powers with Sterling Lancaster Community Television here at Animal Shelter Inc. in Sterling with Melissa Snitzer, the shelter manager. Today she's going to update us on the Puerto Rico animals and give us some Halloween tips. This is Mila. She's a female, one and a half year old Shih Tzu. Uh, she is extremely sweet and loves attention, loves people. She's really curious, so she sniffs around a lot. And she is one of our rescues from Puerto Rico. This is Camille. She's a female three-year-old schnauzer mix. Uh, there's some other type of terrier in there, but we can't quite tell which it is. She really loves belly rubs. Um, she's a tiny bit shy at first, but once uh, it only takes a few minutes for her to get to know you. And then she's really sweet. She's always wagging her tail and she's very, very happy. Uh, she will follow you around and flop on the floor in front of you for pets. <music> This is Luz. She's a female three month old rat terrier mix. Uh, she's also a tiny bit shy at first, but very sweet. She also has a litter mate here. Um, so she does like hanging out with other dogs and that might be an advantage in her new home if there was another dog there already. And she loves to play with toys. This is Paco. He's a male two-year-old Chihuahua mix. So he is full grown at two years. This is as big as he'll get. He's very friendly, uh, loves to check everything out and explore. And even though he is a small dog, he does have quite a bit of energy and will need lots of exercise. <laughs>
This is Brownie. She's a female, two and a half month old lab terrier mix, maybe some boxer in there. Um, she started out a tiny bit shy, but opened up very quickly. She likes to play. She does like to hang out with other dogs and she will probably end up being a medium sized dog when she's full grown. So probably around 40 pounds. All right, Melissa, so what's been going on with the Puerto Rico animals? So uh, some of you may have seen the reports on the news, but we did actually end up raising all of the money needed to get that flight of dogs from Puerto Rico here to Massachusetts. And we picked them up in Worcester last week at the airport. And uh, about 30 or so of them went up for adoption um, last week. And now we have more dogs uh, available this week. Um, so the dogs that we filmed today are actually going to be available and are available right now and for the next few days. Um, and all these dogs looked really good despite the conditions that they were coming from. Uh, a lot of them are super friendly and happy. Um, and they're probably just uh, thrilled to be out of... Puerto Rico where there's still not a lot of water and food and power and things like that. So um, the mission was a success and the dogs are ready to find their new homes. Um, and then so we're also going to talk about some Halloween tips today because that holiday is coming up pretty quickly. And if you have pets at home, Halloween can be a really fun time or it can be kind of a scary time uh, for your dogs and cats. So definitely think about um, if you're thinking of dressing up your dog or cat, uh, think about their comfort first and foremost. Uh, sometimes it's fun to dress up your pet, but they are not very happy about it. So you can always try putting a costume on your pet. And then if they really, really hate it, um, it's probably not the nicest thing to do to them. Uh, if they don't seem to mind it or um, enjoy it, then it's a fun thing to do, especially if you have trick-or-treaters coming to your house or if you're headed out uh, trick-or-treating to have your pet come with you and be dressed up. A lot of people get a kick out of that. So um, obviously with Halloween comes lots of candy and lots of candy is not good for your dog or cat. So be aware of uh, if you have kids in the home, uh, where they're putting their candy after they trick-or-treat, or if you are just passing out candy to trick-or-treaters, always be aware of where that bowl of candy is and make sure that your dog uh, and or cat doesn't have access to it. One of the things uh, that can happen is they, if they eat too much chocolate, chocolate is toxic to your pets, um, also, there is a sweetener called xylitol, um, which is in gum, but also in more and more candies and other foods now. Um, and that's also toxic to, to your dog or cat. So keep an eye on that. Um, also for Halloween, a lot of people do pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns um, and do decorating. So make sure that anything that is an actual lit candle uh, with a flame is kept away from your pet, uh, whether a cat or a dog. Sometimes they get very curious, uh, especially cats, because they see the flame moving and they might want to try to bat at it or chase it. So make sure that that's kept uh, out of reach for your cats and your dogs. Uh, and then the last thing would be when trick-or-treaters come to your house. Um, sometimes if your pet has anxiety um, about visitors or loud noises or things like that, uh, it's a good idea to just keep your pet kind of in a room, uh, maybe with the radio playing, maybe with a family member that's not interested in handing out candy um, so that they don't get too stressed out about the whole situation 
Um, usually trick-or-treating is limited to a few hours now. So uh, if you feel like your pet is going to be extremely stressed out, you can also talk to your vet about anything uh, medication-wise that might help your pet. Um, but otherwise, some pets really enjoy it. They love when people come to the door and the kids' costumes won't scare them. So uh, if you want to bring your dog dressed up in his costume to the door for the trick-or-treaters, that's always fun too.